They're pumpkin spice patches. They're sweet and spicy. That's for sure. We got five ODs to cover. So let's get to it in the patch report. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, head of threat awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our chief patch wrangler. It is patch Tuesday for September of 2024. We've got a lot to cover, including five, not four, five O days from Microsoft. So let's hop right to it. So looking at the Adobe bugs first, as we always do, we've got eight bulletins covering 28 CVEs. Good news here is none of these are under active attack. Uh, we do have a CVSS 9.8 in Cold Fusion. If you're still using Cold Fusion, well, then you should take a look at applying this patch. Also consider a migration to something more modern, maybe just putting that out there. We also have an unusual patch uh, in that it's an Acrobat and Reader back-to-back -back months. Those usually alternate months. So I guess these two were just left over. Look, everything here is priority three. None are under active attack or publicly known at the time of release. So let's get down here to the Microsoft ones where it's really uh, a little bit more interesting. We have 79 CVEs and the usual suspects. Uh, seven of these are rated critical, 71 important, and one moderate. And let's take a look at the first bug under active attack and this is the windows update rce uh, and this is an interesting one because at first i thought this was describing a downgrade attack like we saw at black hat but it turns out that the downgrade was through windows updates uh yes for windows 10 systems a previous patch rolled back some optional opponents to a more vulnerable state. Now, the, the interesting thing here is this particular CVE is an underactive attack, but because of this CVE, some of those alter, alternate components, optional components, excuse me, uh, have been seen under active attack. So a little chicken and egg there, but definitely worth noting. Uh, and it's very interesting. You also need to install the latest servicing stack update as well as this to be fully patched, so make sure you get both of those. Next up, <laughs> I saw this and I had to chuckle. Publisher, I, I totally forgot about Microsoft Publisher, which I, I had, don't think I've touched since the early aughts. Uh, but yes, it's still under support for Office 365 and there's a security feature bypass vulnerability being exploited. So if you're getting some uh, unusual publisher files that someone is enticing you to open, it will evade macro protection and execute code on your system. Why, why are you opening publisher files from unknown sources? I don't know. Uh, Mark of the web. Hey, it's one of our favorite features, at least uh, according to ransomware people it is. This is another Mark of the web bypass that's being used in active attacks. Microsoft doesn't say where this is being used. However, they uh, we've seen Mark of the web bypasses like this being used in ransomware, uh, especially in Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia. So probably ransomware attacks, I can't guarantee locality, but it's another one. Uh, and yo, I, I heard you like installer, so I put an installer in your installer. Uh, and yes, Windows installer is being abused uh, for an elevation of privilege. Now this is typically combined with like a code execution bug. So you elevate privileges, then execute code at system, and then take over the whole system. And finally, <coughs> excuse me, and finally, uh, MSHTML spoofing. Uh, we reported this, we, the Zero Day Initiative, reported this to Microsoft back in June. We told them it was under active attack. We are seeing it being utilized. It is a patch bypass of that July patch, which we also reported to them. Uh, and we are seeing it being abused in a while. Uh, Microsoft does not list it currently as under active attack, but it totally is. And that is why you see it down here as disputed in the um, in our, in our table. So you could take their word for it. You could take my word for it. I know who I believe. Uh, and that's our threat hunters who are showing us this stuff. I do want to note in the table, there's a lot of uh, bugs that have that little extra cross mark there that says you have to do something additional other than just apply a patch. Maybe it's just go getting it from the app store. But for SQL Server, there's a lot of extra steps you need to do for all of these SQL Server uh, bugs. So take your time and really go through the SQL Server bulletin uh, to understand the servicing scenario you might be in. You might have to contact uh, third party vendors to ensure that they are compatible with uh, the new updates. So yeah, that, it's an interesting one. Uh, moving on to some the other critical rated bugs, there's a CVSS uh, 9 something, well, it's, a, it's a critical rated SharePoint, I don't remember the CVS right now, uh, but it was reported by my uh, co-worker, ZDI researcher Piotr, 
and uh, I'm not going to try and say his last name because I say it even worse than his first name, but code execution in the context of the service account. So that is interesting. Um, there's some other critical fixes um, for SharePoint, but they require site owner permissions. Now, Microsoft, again, marks this as uh, privileges high, but if you have the ability to create a site on a SharePoint server, you have the needed permission. So I consider that low. Uh, just another little quirk of CVSS. There's a bug in NAT, which would allow unauthenticated code execution, but NAT's not routable. So you would have to be on the local network to do that. Um, Azure Stack Hub has a couple of uh, critical class bugs that are very interesting because you could uh, mess with other tenants' applications. So that's good. Um, and hey, last month we had a TCP IP bug that looked really scary. I don't think it's been uh, actively exploited yet, but it looked really scary. We have two TCP bugs this month, not nearly as scary, okay? They're non-default configurations. Uh, you have to be running net NAT. And yeah, there's a lot more going into it. So breathe, breathe deeply and, and relax on that one. So you're okay there. Uh, there's some uh, remote desktop licensing bugs that should require some attention, but mainly these things should not be reachable from the internet. So if they are reachable from the internet, then you really need to relook at how you're deploying those. Uh, otherwise you could really get popped with this stuff. Um, so there we go. And again, I have that note about uh, the servicing problems with the SQL server. Uh, normally the SQL bugs we see coming from Microsoft are not as critical. These look pretty interesting. If nothing else, from a servicing standpoint, they're gonna be very difficult. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really important that SQL admins really take a look at this uh, and really pay it close attention to. Uh, there's a bug in Azure Cycle Cloud that almost reads like a privilege escalation because a basic user could become uh, a root level permission user, but they list it as code execution. So it, it confuses me a little, but I am slow and dull of wit. So there you have it. A lot of EOP bugs in this month's release, but the vast majority of them are just bugs where a local person runs a specially crafted program and they elevate the system or administrative privileges. And yes, those two things are different. Um, the only interesting ones, again, are the SQL Server. Uh, the PowerShell is uh, an interesting one, too, because you could elevate from a regular user to WDEC. Um, that's interesting. A couple security feature bypass bugs that we haven't discussed already, uh, and both deal with browsing. There's another Mark of the Web one um, that this one is not listed as uh, actively attacked, but is probably going to be used by attackers because that's what they do. Uh, and then for Windows security zone mapping, so uh, you could have an attacker who sends you a URL that should be in one zone, but gets put into a higher zone where there is fewer security uh, applied to it, you know, that sort of thing. So definitely take a look at those. There are 11 information disclosure bugs uh, in the September release. However, most of these are just random memory dumps, heat memory, kernel memory, that sort of thing. So that's good. The desktop licensing server does have that effervescent sensitive information that could be disclosed. But also if you're using Outlook for iOS, uh, you need to go get the new app from the App Store if you're not automatically updating your apps. Uh, if you're using Outlook on your iPhone or your iPad, uh, it could disclose file information, but we, they don't exactly say what type of file disclosure it could be if it's targeted or untargeted. Uh, there's a spoofing bug in the desktop licensing service. Um, again, just make sure that this is not connected to the internet. It doesn't say what sort of spoofing, but I'm guessing you could spoof licenses or something. Um, handful of DOS bugs. Again, little information about these. There are three uh, in the network stack. One of them says adjacent, which means a local attacker only, but the other two say network. So make of that what you can. Uh, obviously DHCP server, a DOS in that could be very critical to your enterprise. Uh, so take a look at those. And again, Microsoft, if we could just get some, a little bit of information, temporary, permanent, reboot required, automatic reboot, that sort of thing, be fantastic just to let us know, but you know. Uh, and then there's a cross-site scripting bug in Microsoft Dynamics on-prem. 
And that wraps up the September release. Uh, so five O days in Microsoft that we need to be very careful about and really look into. And if you've hung out with me this far, I want to say thank you. Uh, I know I'm sniffling a bit. The allergies here in the Mid-South headquarters <clears throat> are, are pretty severe. Next up, uh, Patch Tuesday is going to be October 8th, and we will be back with our very spooky uh, patches then. And until then, everyone stay safe, have fun, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.